You're welcome to part two of our slate lamp examination techniques tutorials. In this video, we're going to be looking at your patient preparation, instrument preparation, and the examiner preparation. Before you start examining your patient, you need to take care of your instrument. How do we take care of our instrument? We need to sanitize this instrument. And you shouldn't sanitize it before your patient walks into your consulting room. You should sanitize it when your patient is seated. It gives your patient more confidence in you. It's always better you sanitize in their presence. I use my disinfectant and then I, san I sanitize all the parts that come in contact with my patient sanitizing the chin rest the forehead rest and sometimes your patients may be holding on to this part especially if your patient is probably a child so you need to sanitize may also do well to sanitize the parts of the table that are closer to your patient your patient is not expected to touch the table but you sanitize regardless how do you prepare yourself as the examiner you need to make sure you're just seated comfortably that is basically it how do you prepare your patient you need to make sure that your patient is seated comfortably your patient shouldn't be slouching or stretching so when your patient sits you observe your patient and if possible you may do well to also find out from your patient if he or she is comfortable so let's demonstrate how we prepare our patients for this test the first step in preparing your patient is to tell your patient what you're about to carry out on him or her you're welcome. So today I want to examine your eyes with this specialized instrument. I'm going to be observing your ocular structures. So please put your chin in the chin rest and your head gently and firmly on the forehead rest. So your patient is seated. You can see the patient's back is okay. She's not slouching much and she's not stretching much. I can also go ahead to find out from my patient if she is comfortable. Are you comfortable? Okay, so she's comfortable. The next step in preparing your patient is to make sure that your patient's eye is at the cantus marker. All right, so make sure that the temporal cantus is aligned with this marker. How do we move that? We use this knob here to take her face up a little bit. So my patient's eyes haven't gotten to where I want them. And if I move this any further, my cantus marker is going to be invisible. So I'm going to finish up with pressing the lever on the table. So I move up the table. And now my patient's eyes are properly aligned. The next thing we want to do is to set our instrument. How do we set our instrument for this test? First of all, we need to adjust for our refractive error. We will do that with the use of the eyepiece. After adjusting the refractive error of the clinician, the next thing is that we're going to try to attain a binocular single vision by adjusting this to set for our PD because in your practice you may be more than one doctor using the slate lamp so for each time you want to use it make sure you adjust for your refractive error and adjust for your PD if you are the one using it alone then you don't need to be adjusting all these things because you know that they are fixed for you already so I'll be using either the focusing rod
this is my focusing rod so i may be using either this or my patient's nose bridge or my patient's closed eyes to set the light source at a point focus and also to make sure that i've achieved my binocular vision how do i achieve my binocular single vision by making sure that when my two eyes are open i am seeing the structures i am looking at when you're performing slit lamp examination you shouldn't be done monocularly your two eyes should be open and yes you should be seeing your target with your two eyes open let me use my patient's nose bridge so i'm going to use my patient's nose bridge to get my focal point as well as compensate for my refractive error if you are looking through the slit lamp when you turn it on and shine the light on your patient's nose bridge you are not going to have a clear focus of the light source so what you need to do at this point is to use your joystick to move your slit lamp illumination and observation system closer to your patient's nose bridge until you begin to see the pores on the patient's nose bridge so when you begin to see this pause that means you have set it at your focal point so now i have set it i'm even seeing some of the hairs on my patient's nose bridge the next thing i have to do is to compensate for my refractive error by turning the eyepiece so i'm going to do this monocularly because i need to compensate for my error of refraction on both eyes so it's clear at this point for my right eye the left eye it's also clear at this point the next i'm going to try to attain my single binocular vision perfect so at this point i have adjusted for my interpupillary distance and i'm seeing the light source with the two eyes open let me also mention that before your patient gets seated you need to move your observation and illumination system backwards so that your patient doesn't sit down if it's too close and bump her nose or eyes onto the system all right and now for the illumination techniques in slit lamp we have eight different types. Number one is the diffuse illumination. Number two is the direct, three indirect, four retro illumination, five specular reflection, six sclerotic scatter, seven tangential illumination, and eight oscillatory illumination. Now, under number two, which is the direct illumination, it is further broken down into three, which is the narrow beam or the optic section, the broad beam, which is also known as the parallel pipe, and the conical beam. The retro illumination is also subdivided into two, which is the direct and the indirect retro illumination. We also have other specialized techniques such as the Van Herrick, the Smith technique, the split limber technique, the indirect ophthalmoscopy of the retina with the Vogue lens, which comes in either the 90D, 78D, or the 60D. We also have some diagnostic tests we perform with the slit lamp such as the TBUT, which is the tear breakup time, the tear meniscus assessment, also known as the lacrimal prism. We also have the cornea assessment, where you get to stain the cornea with the fluorescent strips. As for example, when your patient is complaining of foreign body sensation, or when you want to perform your TBUT, you get to stain your patient with the fluorescent strips and then you examine when you stain you examine with the blue filter we have come to the end of the part two of this series in the next part we're going to be demonstrating these illumination techniques in detail where you get to understand 
how to perform them, when you should use which method. Thank you so much for subscribing, for those who have subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, do well to subscribe. And if you have enjoyed this video so far, if you have learned something from this video, do well to click on the like button and hit the notification bell so that when I drop the third part, you'll get notified. See you in the next video.